was called to order the Rutherford County Regional Planning Commission for July 22nd, 2024. We'll ask that everyone please stand at this time for our prayer and pledge of allegiance. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day that you've given us. We're thankful for the refreshing rain that you gave us overnight and which we are truly needing to help with our drought, to help with the dry conditions we have here and to make Rutherford County green. Father, we're so thankful for all the things that we have here within this county, but we ask that you give us the ability to help with its planning, to help with its future, to help with the citizens and what they want and what it needs. Father, we ask that you be with us today, that you give us that guidance. We ask that you be with those that are unable that, to be here today because of illness, that you look after them, you protect them, and be with their caregivers. Father, we're so thankful for everything, but may we remember that the things that we do have come from you. We offer this prayer in your son's holy name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We'll ask now for our secretary to do the roll call for the termination of the quorum. Jim Averwater. Present. Jeff Phillips. Present. Mike Cush. Present. Lee Bogle. Here. Charlotte P. Here. Trey Gooch. Here. Chip Pinion. Marvin Whitworth. Jim Thompson. Here. Pettis Reed. Here. We have a quorum. We do have a quorum. Uh, we do not have any minutes to approve uh, today. Public comment period, do we have anything? Uh, no, sir, we do not. No, nothing for our public comment period. <laughs> Items withdrawn or deferred? Uh, nothing, sir. All right, we'll just move right into our new business. Item seven, going into item A. We've already got one discussion here that's already taken care of. I didn't touch anything. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> I don't know if people really realize it, but this courtroom is sort of haunted. So just, you know, every now and then this does happen. <laughs> Item A, submitted for preliminary plan approval. Item 1, Mockingbird Estates, 241002, 27 lots on 20.21 acres, zone PUD located along Las Casas Pike and Mockingbird Lane. Propco 1000 LLC is the applicant. Mr. DeBossi. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, as you stated, this property is located along Las Casas Pike and Mockingbird Lane. The planned development zoning of this was approved back in December of 2023. The pattern book shows a total of 21 single family detached lots and 40 single family attached townhomes. The preliminary plan shows the creation of all the lots, including the townhome lots, and the townhome lots themselves, but those will have to be brought in uh, with a site plan. Uh, this is not, this plat does not include the construction of those townhome units. Most of staff's concerns on this plat have been about the traffic uh, along Mockingbird Lane. I'm going to let Mike speak to that here in a little bit more detail. Most of our other comments have been addressed from a planning standpoint. Uh, it looks like, and planning and zoning standpoint at least, it looks like they've addressed the comments we've had. But I will turn it over to Mike to discuss this, the traffic issue in a little more detail. All right, thank you, Douglas. So um, let me get to the maps. Mockingbird Lane is an old county road, um, very narrow, twisty, turny, uh, goes from Las Casas Pike, High State Route 96, all the way over to Emory to the west. And measuring a couple places, it's 15, 16 feet at best. So it is very, very narrow. Um, also at the intersection, and I'll show you uh, on street view, it's the best way to look at it, right at the intersection, this, this is the property, this cornfield here is the, the property. There's Mockingbird Lane, you can see that it's got, you know, uh, trees next to it, an old stone wall, but and it's hard, kind of hard to tell, but this is sitting below grade of uh, Las Casas Pike. And we have had discussions with the uh, design team about this uh, needing to make improvements at this intersection. So what they will 
do is improve the grade of this so it's not as steep directly at um, at, at Las Casas Pike, give a little bit of a landing um, so when you, cars do come to this intersection, they will be able to sit at grade. And we've also had discussions with TDOT, um, the local TDOT representative, and what we're gonna do is mirror what's across the street, have a dedicated left, right, and through. So we will coordinate all that. There'll have to be some improvements with the drainage on the front here. Uh, but going back to Mockingbird, it's, like I said, it's rather narrow um, and we need to confirm with the staff and the design team that um, Mockingbird will be brought up to current standards. So right now, if it's 15, 16 feet, our current standard is two 10 foot lanes and two four foot shoulders. So we need some assistance with the design team and the developer to bring um, Mockingbird up to those standards. And they've agreed to uh, widen from Flycatcher, which is the main route in, but I would like to see improvements all the way along the entire length of the project. So um, I'd like to see improvements all the way back to Emory because if you look at where these kids are gonna go to school, and so Doug's playing with it again. So, um, so here's Mockingbird Lane. Here is where the development will be. Um, middle and high school won't be as bad. They, they're gonna go all zone for Oakland Middle, Oakland High School, but all the elementary school kids will have to go to Las Casas. So they're gonna have to turn left out of here. And if you know Las Casas Pike and early in the morning, it's, it's a long, long line of cars um, coming towards town in the morning. So it'll be hard to turn left to come out of there. And what's, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see some people that will go back to Emory at the end of, of Mockingbird Lane, come up to Compton, take a right, and go to this traffic signal at Compton, or at least I would, to try to get my kids to Las Casas. So um, I, I'm comfortable with just them making improvements all along their frontage of Mockingbird and not um, all the way to Emory. Uh, I, even though I'd like to see it, but I would, I think that's a, an agreement we can come to to cooperate to at least get their section of Mockingbird up to standards. So that's, that's part of what we're looking at. Um, but we need confirmation from the design team and development team that they're gonna at least do their section. Um, so one of the questions they brought up is where does it say in the regulations that you have to do this? And if you look at the, the purpose note in our subdivision regulations, it say, states in there, and I'll try to pull that up for you. And forgive me for rambling, but I think this is important. Um, so if you look in our subdivision regulations, it goes into the purpose and everything. Um, it says these regulations are intended to provide for a harmonious development of the region and its environs for the coordination of roads within the subdivided, subdivided land and with other existing or planned roads or with the state or regional plan or with the plans of the municipalities in or near the region for adequate open space for traffic, light, air, recreation, for the conservation of or production of adequate transportation, adequate transportation, and uh, water drainage and sanitary facilities for the avoidance of population congestion and for the avoidance of such scattered or premature subdivisions of land as would involve danger, injury, health, safe, and pros or prosperity. So my point is if we, if we don't improve 
these roads, the existing roads, that's going to be an issue with all the new townhomes and everything. So, like I said, we can't really force them to do everything in on Mockingbird, but if we can get at least get their their portion brought up to current standards, I would be okay with that. Um, there are some, um, whoop, let me get back to the, there are some sharp curves on Mockingbird. This is the development here. So there are some sharp curves here. Um, I would like these to be evaluated with a um, ball bank indicator to see how fast uh, uh, safely a person can go around these corners and and have these signed adequately. So you've seen the yellow signs that are advisory speeds that, that tells people, hey, you need to slow down, take these corners a little bit slower. And that's what I'm looking for here. But if we can get them to agree to improve this intersection and widen this section of Mockingbird along the length of their development, I'm uh, feeling better about this development. And I'm sorry for a, a long discussion, but that's, that's the way I feel. Commissioners, comments, questions? Mr. Phillips. One quick question uh, I'd like to ask Nick. Um, uh, it appears that the developer is questioning our um, management ability uh, to enforce what we think are, are appropriate uh, improvements for that particular area. Uh, would, would the language that um, Mike just presented cover us from having that authority to, imp to do the road improvements? That's something I'd have to look into. I know typically this body has required uh, certain parcels that abut roadways that are inconsistent or with our standards and that present health, safety, and welfare issues to the surrounding area and has asked um, applicants to make those improvements at least in so far as the roadway abuts or touches their property. Generally, uh, we have been able to obtain cooperation from the applicants to do that. Uh, ultimately, uh, if this body without those improvements believes that this um, parcel as proposed to be developed um, will present safety and health issues, then that uh, you could use that as a basis to deny it. Um, now, whether that's a sufficient basis would be up to a court system if there were to be litigation involved. Um, with that being said, um, there are, um, there's, there's case law on this stuff and we can we can deal with that if we need to deal with that. Um, I think that's all I've got right now. If I think of something else, I'll chime in. Oh, I do have something else. Um, have they submitted a traffic study? They have not. Or, oh, they did originally, yes, they did. Okay, yes. does it yeah. indicate the need for improvements at, at that roadway? to sustain the increased traffic that'll, that'll be at, caused? At, at, are we talking the intersection or the, lo the Either. road width? I, I'd have to go back and look at it, uh, Nick. I, I believe that they have agreed to, well, I'm trying to think. Um, so in our regulations, a traffic study is required if there is a um, 100 peak hour trips or more generated by development. So. This one didn't exceed that level of threshold. It will generate a lot of traffic, but it did not uh, generate that. I can't remember. Did y'all do one, Jamie? I'm trying to think. Um, well, if no, this body, we, if this we did body, not do one yeah, because body, it did not trigger that. Well, I understand that, but uh, what's important here ultimately for the body is to do what's right for the public and to make sure the area is safe. So if, if this body thinks that a traffic study could be warranted before it further passes upon this application, that might be another option. I'll jump in there, Mike, because you know I've stressed the concern that traffic studies are just one indicator. The other issue I have is driving concrete trucks in and out, 
block trucks. And just speaking from experience, we don't have to go any farther than Rucker Lane, and I can give you multiple small roads out here in the county that start out like this. And the next thing you know, we start putting these trucks on and the traffic is never designed for that. Should we not as a county be requiring some core drilling to see what our roads really are like before we add this kind of traffic to it? Yes, sir, we do that as well with the, with the construction plans. So if this, this is an old county road, a lot of times we'll say, hey, we're not thinking that the lumber packages won't hold up the concrete trucks like you told us. So yes, we do require that a lot at uh, construction plan phase. Let me ask you this, would that take it, can we not core drill on the round where you're saying, you know, just the distance of this subdivision, but those sharp curves, I can tell you the trucks are gonna go path of least resistance. So if we're gonna put trucks there, would we not wanna core drill those to verify that the roads is capable, that we're not creating hazards for the citizens that are living out there that are having to deal with roads that are caving in and splitting? Yes, sir, we can look at that at construction plan phase. We can, we can do, definitely do that. Thank and you, it, Mike. It, they're typically at 50, 100 feet, you know, ever ever intermittent. So it's not continuously, but it's it's ever so often, and they, they kind of look at that. So a lot of these these old county roads have been in place for you know decades upon decades, and they have a good base, but they're just not wide enough. I mean, it was just base for agricultural use, but we will definitely look at that. Well, based on this conversation, I mean, I don't think we can call good, I think, I don't think we can call it good planning without considering the road. We cannot put a subdivision on a substandard road. Uh, and if we have basis to, to require them to do it to all their property, I think that would only be good planning to require that for, for future development in that area. Other commissioners, questions, comments? Now, we haven't talked about the size of these lots. We've talked about the road, but if you look at the size of these lots, they're 60 feet, 55, there's one that's 48, and that's below the lot size that PUD needs and the other utilities need um, to put the utilities on those lots. These lots are too small. Well, and I, I'll address that, at least say that, you know, again, this the zoning, which, uh, which they, in the pattern book, dictated the lot sizes was approved back in December of last year. Now, we've gotten into a lot more discussion since then, but what the zoning of what they have is approved. So, yes, the, I mean, your, your comments are, are well received but the zoning is already in place for this. Now, this is probably the last one like this that we're going to see, uh, I would say, like uh, with these size of lots. I don't think we're entertaining any more like this, but this one was approved as such. Yeah, I'm looking at the preliminary and I'm seeing a lot of 60. Uh, where did you say they were less than that? Well, it's 73 right there is, is the, it there. Um, okay, well, it's, um, I think they, Doug can help me, but I think they measure at the setback. Measure, line. yeah, a lot width is typically measured at the setback according to our definitions. Now I will say that as we've been dealing more with these small lots, we have been asking since that point, to have them give a minimum distance at the right-of-way line, not just the lot width, but he's right, lot width is measured at the setback line, not the, the front. So. But I'm not gonna lie, they are tight, so yeah, they are. But again, the zoning was approved on them. Okay, we'll now ask that the applicant or their representative come forward this time. Good morning, 
Good morning. Is this on? Need your uh, name? Yep. I'm Matt Dowdle with GR Horton, 819 Seven Oaks Boulevard in Smyrna. All right. Uh, we are in agreement that we're, we're good to widen the road from uh, Highway 96 to the extent of the northern boundary of our property. Uh, we can widen that to the standard. The, the curve is a different issue for us um, because of existing CUD water main, uh, the existing large trees that we'd love to keep as part of the open space, potential to our open space calcs and density issues. So right. we'd, li we'd like to see if there's some way that, well, that's knowing that our traffic, you know, majority of our traffic is entering the southernmost entrance right there and heading out to 96, and then any of our traffic that may head north on Mockingbird is gonna use that, that other entrance. Right. We don't, we don't really feel that we impact that curve. Like, we're not so adding extra traffic to that curve, but we'd, we would gladly widen it, but well, we just don't feel we, we can talked about flatten your, it out. What we talked about with your design engineer, mm -hmm. our, yes, original, one of our original comments was, let's soften these curves, smooth them out. Mm -hmm. And we understand what you're saying, but what we want your design team to do is to look at how fast, uh, how safely can a person navigate that curve and okay. put advisory signs up. Okay. Not not to to smooth the not curve. Not to totally out. flatten it out not to like to a big three hundred foot radius to, or something. To label clearly how fast you should be going around this corner and put okay. some you know, um, chevrons up to say, hey, your curve's approaching. Yeah, we can work with you on that. Okay. For sure. Commissioner? Uh, I'd like to know, how, knowing that these small lots cause issues for uh, utilities and engineers, how you can call this good planning when you know these are going to cause problems. I, I don't think they're going to cause problems because we've got enough space for the required easements for CUD and we meet the minimum standards that were approved in the PUD. Well, our history of, of this in the past, of these small lots that have caused issues with utilities trying to get everything in and people wanting to put trees or fences or things in their yard, it's, it, it's just difficult. And there's nothing like this, this condensed development in that area. Commissioner? I'm sorry, your head was turned in that direction. Oh, I'm sorry, when you sir. you introduced yourself and yeah. would you yeah, I'm Matt Dowdle. you are? I'm Matt Dowdle with DR Horton. You're, what, you're the developer? Yes, yes, we're the proposed developer, yes. And you live in? I personally live in uh, Williamson County. Okay. Our office is in Smyrna. And l let me just make this crystal clear. Mm -hmm. You've agreed to do the road improvements that our staff has asked you to do. Yes, the widening of Mockingbird Lane. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions for the applicant? I'd like to know how long the driveways will be and how wide they're planned to be in this development. The drive, driveways? The driveways, the how long homes? will they be? I've seen one the other day showing four cars parked on the driveway and I took a measurement and I've got some photos that would contradict you could get four cars in a driveway. So just curious to know what we're showing on paper matches up with reality. I may need to bring up our consultant on that to make sure I understand the setback. I, is it, Rob, is it 30, 35? What is that setback? 35, yeah. 35, Doug. Good morning, Rob Molson, SEC, 850 Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Uh, per the pattern book and in what's in the, de in the design package that you guys have in front of you today, the front setback on these homes is 35 foot, so it'll be a two car depth with two cars wide, so four cars total in front of the homes on that side which has been standard for most, most of the puzzles that have been coming through the county for the last 10 years. I couldn't agree with you more, and it is a total wreck out there in reality at 35 feet trying to get four cars on these driveways. So we're working on that right now. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see if we can't get that improved. Is that considering two in the garage? 
But that's in, that's four outside of the garage plus two in the garage. So I mean, you know, but we all know that the standard practice for most most people today is use their garage as storage. So we're still meeting the minimum county standards with having four cars outside the garage, assuming people are using their garage for storage. So it's hard to call those garages their stuff holders. <laughs> stuff holders. <laughs> Other questions? And you. you will you will see the site plan for the townhomes later. So it'll be it'll come in as a site plan itself. Yeah, and I will say again, not uh, this doesn't have any bearing on today, but the townhomes are actually alley loaded in the rear. So you're not going to see the uh, any cars in the front with the townhomes because they do have a rear alley, rear alley back there. Let me ask you, when you talk about four sets on that driveway, does that mean that the last two in are over the uh, sidewalk? No, there actually is in regards to the diagrams that are in the PUD book. On, see that it's 35 feet from the right of way to the house. So you got 35 feet plus, and there's also room between the right of way and then the back edge of the sidewalk. So technically you've got actually probably more like almost 40 foot of space between there. So it'd be 20 and 20, so more than a typical standard parking space stacked up between the sidewalk and the garage. These folks don't own an F-350, do they? <laughs> Some might. Some might. Not all. Okay. Other questions? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all. Mr. Phillips, just want to clarify in regards to what Mr. Dottle was saying in regards to, you know, we're going to do the world improvements that we've already have in the plan, plus we're going to widen um, Mockingbird back to the end of our property, so that's me. You know, so we're going to be property covering line to property, line. property line to property line. So, I right, use your microphone. What I just heard was that they agreed to do what the staff's recommendations were. Is that what you're saying also? Mr. Or not? Hughes's recommendation was to improve the frontage of our property so we'd be widening everything that's along our frontage of Mockingbird Lane. And I think put the signage up, Mike, is what you right. said. Right, signage, yeah. and the signage, signage as of well. the curves yes. um, and the improvements at the intersection. Is, Mike, while they're up there, is, is, is that? Is that what you were referring to earlier? Yes, I, I'm working with them, you know, instead of forcing them to make improvements all the way back to Emory, I'm saying, hey, let's let's make in, at least make improvements along the frontage of your property to bring it up to current standards. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll agree that if we if they do work with us, we're, I'm good with that. Yes, sir. Yes. Let me make sure I understand now. I'm concerned from the subdivision back toward Emory, core drilling and make sure. Yes, the they, they can investigate that as well. And what uh, <clears throat> what we can do with with the information from the core drillings, we can sign those roads and say no uh, vehicles above a certain weight. You know, we can we can dictate that. Uh, but like, like I said, typically these old county roads, it's not the subgrade that's the issue or the, or the pavement thickness, it's the width of it and, and the shoulders and whatnot. So. But we're agreeing that they don't have to do anything about the width or anything past right. the Right, well, I'm not the saying road. they need to widen it, but if it, the core drillings come back that it's a substandard road and won't hold up to the heavy trucks, we can have the highway department or them come up with some signage and say no trucks over 10 tons or whatever the weight load is. And you guys are agreeing to core drill, pay for that, and, mm -hmm. and yes. follow compliance with that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we'll work with Mike on that. Thank there you. No more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners? Mr. Chair, thank you. Mike, I, I've got a question, or, or Doug. Um, it kind of goes back to what uh, was touched on a few minutes ago. If after 150 cement trucks and 50 lumber packages 
come in and the road is beat to pieces whose responsibility then is it to get that road back to a proper condition what we also require and i didn't mention this earlier is we've come up we've worked with the highway department to come up what's called a road connection and performance agreement so they place a surety uh, and they sign this agreement saying, hey, if you tear up this road, existing road, because of the turning movements in and out of all the heavy trucks, um, we're going to make you pay for that correction or we will take that surety and fix it ourselves. So we, we do have another mechanism in place when we get to the construction plan uh, phase. Um, so, yes, they and we, we've got other avenues we can hold up releasing lots we can hold up building permits we can hold up c of o's whatever there's there's a several carrots and sticks along the way that if they tear up that road we can have it fixed if, if i could i probably should have asked uh, the developer while he was up here but i think lots three and four those are intended to be townhomes yes sir that's correct and they are for sale I believe the pattern book said that they would be for purchase. All of the townhome units would be for purchase. Now, and we've discussed this, after they're purchased, after that, we don't have much of any way to track it, but they are for purchase on the front end. Could That's I cool. ask a, the design team or the developer that question, if you don't mind? It, it's important to me. Lots three and four, I should have asked you when you're up here, I apologize. No problem. Yep. Uh, it, th those were all townhomes, correct? Yes, sir. And, and they will be developed and sold individually? Yes. Okay, yes. very good. Now, as mentioned before, we can't control after we sell them, but I, I yeah, know the, the intent is for sale. I know the individual lots, uh, homeowners are responsible. Uh, townhomes, who's responsible for maintenance and upkeep of the outside, the exterior of those? So each of those residents will, will pay an increased fee in their uh, HOA fee, and it, the HOA manages the outsides of those units. And the HOA, um, it's the same HOA that covers the entire piece of property? Yes, so there's a, an overall HOA, and then there's a sub-association associated just for the townhomes. So they pay an increased fee compared to the single family, but they both pay f fees to uh, manage the open spaces, uh, stormwater, uh, detention, maintenance, that those sort of items. So they own the inside and the outside of, of those homes? Yeah, they, they own the home, but their fees through the HOA pay for the maintenance of the outside, the roof, siding, any of those items. But they do own the inside and outside. It's Yes, sir. The HOA doesn't really own anything. That's correct. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. We've talked about parking and we've talked about the road. There's only one, well, there's one main drag in the middle. And in an ideal world, everybody would park in their driveway or ideally in their garage, but we know it's like 73% uh, have their garage full of stuff. And so they park outside. Is this ideally but we know by experience people are going to park on the road is this road wide enough it within the subdivision if they park in the road that a fire truck can get by this is built as or will be built i should say as a standard county road like mike was talking about earlier in the event that there is somebody parking there i mean josh i don't think is here to ask but uh, as far and you know i don't want to speak for him but if there's an issue there, um, they're showing, what are they showing, Mike? Yeah, two 12-foot lanes. 12-foot lanes, so, yeah, that's even, I mean, th that, that's the that's a little One foot longer, yeah, yeah, wider than what we usually see. So I don't think that's going to be as much of an issue. Doug, I just wanted to make sure that uh, all the utility companies, CUD, um, has signed off on this plan. Well, they'll have to, as far as the water and sewer availability for septic, well, step and water, I mean, we do, and electric, we do have those. Now, obviously, before 
they're allowed to be in construction out there with their construction drawings and everything, they'll have to get sign off from Consolidated Utility District from Middle Tennessee Electric to actually start installing all of the connections and the tanks and everything. So even if this is approved, they still have a lot to go before they actually start breaking ground and are allowed to start doing uh, the improvements. All of, all of those comments would be covered under a, a motion to approve? It, it would, uh, but again, you know, it, that that is always kind of our standard staff comments anyway. But regardless, even if we didn't say anything, they would still have to abide by whatever CUD and Middle Tennessee Electric would require of them. Thank you. That's last month, if I remember right, we had uh, a CUD that was way out in the county that this commission felt it inappropriate to develop, and it would be more appropriate to develop in the more urban boundaries of the county. And I believe. Uh, this fits that perfectly and um, with the concerns uh, about the road improvements and staff's uh, approval of uh, the plan to improve the roads and the traffic flow, uh, I move to approve with all staff comments. Second. Motion to approve. I have a second. Any further comments? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? have two no's it has been approved moving on into item b submitted for final plat approval item one hagen subdivision 24 20, 20 47 one lot on 0.37 acres zoned rm located along burnt knob road Phyllis Hagen is the applicant, includes a waiver to the fire hydrant distance requirement. Mr. DeMossi. Yes, sir, thank you. The applicant's proposing to divide about a third of an acre from the parent tract. The existing single wide mobile home that's on the property will be removed from the property prior to plat recording. Uh, this property is not within a thousand feet of a fire hydrant. Consolidated Utility District has uh, provided a letter stating that a hydrant cannot be located on the line along Burton Knob Road. Uh, for that reason, they are asking for the fire hydrant waiver. I will say that the first iteration of this plat actually showed it with a septic soil easement as well, but as you can see, they've added a little bit of extra land to the property, kept the septic soil site on the same track, eliminating the need for that. Uh, beyond the need for the fire hydrant waiver, this plat does meet our requirements. They've met all of our conditions and comments, and we'd recommend approval. We'll be happy to answer any questions. Ms. Hagen is present if you have questions, but again, beyond the fact that it needs a waiver, this plat's in good order. Commissioners, questions or comments? I don't believe we have any. I believe the applicant is here. Would you like to come forward and make any comments you would like to make? And if any commissioner has questions for the applicant, they may do so. Good morning. Well, just, just <laughs> give us your name and address, and then we'll um, just ask commissioners if they have questions to ask them. My name is Phyllis Hagen. Um, this is for 6318. Um, I own five and a quarter acres. I inherited this property uh, from a very good friend of mine that I took care of. But other than that, um, I've tried to follow everything that was asked of me going by list, um, doing it like it should be done. So, any questions? <laughs> I'm scared. Commissioners, any questions? What do you plan to do with the, the property? Um, actually, I've got a buyer that's coming from Nashville to put a double wide in there to um, live, um, as far as I know. He couldn't be here. He got in that IT uh, meltdown. Um, he texted me. He was going to be here, but he couldn't. Okay, I don't think there's any more questions. We'll let, let you sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners?
D Doug, explain our process on a, a mobile home. Yes, uh, single wide mobile homes are allowed by right only if it's five acres or larger. You can do a mobile home on less, a single wide on less than five acres if you get a special exception. But from what she was saying, like again, that's going to be removed, the existing single wide, and they'll be putting a double wide. Double wide is treated as a stick built home for the purposes of zoning. There's no restrictions for that acreage wise, so that's, that's perfectly fine. They'll have to get building permits, of course, and everything, but beyond that, it's treated no differently. We are open for a motion. I move to approve upon all staff comments. Motion made to approve second. staff comments. I have a second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? That has been approved. All right, item two, section B, Smotherman Estate, section one, phase two, and resub of lots 26, 27, 34, and 57, 24, 20, 52. 68 lots on 67.56 acres, zoned RL, located along Jones Road, Hollingshead Land, LLC, is the applicant, Mr. DeMossi. Yes, sir, thank you. The preliminary plan for this development was approved by the Planning Commission back in March of 2020. This final plat does appear to be consistent with that plan. The final plat for Section 1, Phase 1, was approved by the Planning Commission back in January of this year. Uh, as you know, this property is zoned residential low density. We did change the variable lot size provision in the zoning ordinance by removing it. So this per development wouldn't be allowed currently in the RL, but it was approved prior to that being removed. So just uh, for a little background information there for you. Uh, most of our comments have been addressed. Something I did want to bring to your attention, it's something you can see on this page right here. Uh, one of the lots in the subdivision, I believe it's lot 57, if I'm right, I can be mistaken on that, but I believe it's 57. Uh, the way that it's currently platted as or will be platted, yeah, the one Mike's kind of highlighting there. It's a, it's a big open space lot. And you can see it's got frontage along the cul-de-sac, um, but however, that's gonna be at a later phase. So as of right now, uh, they need a way to access the property. It's greater than five acres. It's gonna have limited road frontage. So they are extending a 50 foot access easement. That's something we've done in the past. We don't have any real issue with it. When that road is extended, it'll just become right away. The easement will just go away because it won't be necessary anymore. But I wanted to make that point clear that they have extended that after we brought that to their attention. And again, this not, that's not the first time we've seen something like that. So we're comfortable with it. Uh, but beyond that, I think our comments have been addressed. Mike, did you have anything further on that one? Okay, I'll turn it over to Mike. Yes, I do. Um, what brought this about to be put in different phases, um, the state had a rule, uh, TDEC had a rule that you could only disturb 50 acres or less um, with, with their, your state stormwater permit. And when this was uh, originally um, brought about and we had our construction plans, it met that rule. So we had to divide up this long section uh, into phases, sub phases. So they built part of it and had it platted and then now they're bringing up the other part here. So they had to build the roads all the way down to the step system towards the river. So um, the road is, is in or it's nearly uh, finished for construction, so they're just bringing in some more of these lots along the way, and that's how they had to piecemeal it. But now the state does allow you to go above the 50 acres and in disturbance, but you have to have uh, higher levels of testing and whatnot. So, um, but this does meet our, our uh, all our rules and regulations, and, and we're in agreement with it. Commissioners, questions for the staff? It, just one question. Uh, this is uh, section one, phase two. How many sections, how many phases are in this uh, process, this whole development? It, I believe for section one, this would be the last phase. Now, sections after that, 
that. They, they have multiple sections. I was thinking yeah, this is a pretty four or five. Yeah, six. this is a pretty sizable development. Yeah. So there's going to be several sections they, with it. Um, zoom out a little bit, and I'll show you. Turn off some of these layers. Uh, they will have two connections up to Jones Road, and eventually they will have another connection to the south. Um, I think in phase four or maybe later. What's that? Oh, okay. But to the south, there is another uh, connection point. So I'm thinking five, six phases. Yeah, and that uh, can vary as well, just due to market demand. Uh, you know, sometimes phases aren't as big, or sections, I should say, aren't as big if the economy is slower. So it might take longer. But it, there were several sections with this when they, uh, when they originally submitted it. Thank you. So there's more to come. Yes, sir. There is. Mr. Chair, I have a question. What condition is Jones Road? Jones Road is um, not as narrow as Mockingbird. It's It's got uh, what we had them do with the first phase first of the first section is to add turn lanes on Jones and their um, They've worked on those, so there there is a left turn lane into there and to Beverly Court, which is across the street. So, um, yeah, it's 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 in better shape and it is wider than Mockingbird. And there's, and there's no only direct one way in and one way out of that subdivision. Right now, but they will have two road connections on Jones, um, and then they will. I can pull up the construction it's, plan. Uh, that, like, but there's yeah, another connection there's, up here. There's one in the back, too. And then yeah. there's one right down there. here. Uh, Lotto Lane will have a connection here. So we'll have essentially three connections, and you'll it'll go down to uh, Paragon Drive, he, down to here to Cairo. But as I remember, there's not any connections directly to Midland Road uh, no, due to there, the creek you know, and, and everything. Yeah, this across was tracked that. off yeah. and sold, right. this part over here. Other questions? You have questions for the applicant? I've got just one. Mike on these, if we core drill and verify Jones Road is capable yes, of handling the traffic. Yes, the highway department like was said. adamant about um, Jones Road, and likewise, we do have the road connection performance agreement, so if they do tear up Jones Road, we do have um, a surety that they can get that fixed. And then also, uh, like I said earlier, we can withhold building permits and whatnot. But they did, the highway department did investigate Jones Road and, uh, earlier on. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, you looking for a motion? I will take a motion. I'm going to make a motion. We approve based on staff comments. Motion to approve. Multiple seconds. Further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. aye. Those opposed? One no. It has been approved. Moving to item three, Sam Anderson track resub of lots 1A and 1B. 22-2055, two lots on 5.24 acres, zoned RL, located along Halls Hill Pike. Sam Anderson Construction Incorporated is the applicant. It does include a waiver for an off-site soil easement. Mr. Namasi. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, you'll recall back in April of this year, the applicant did come forward asking for the off-site soil easement uh, during your April 22nd meeting uh, prior to getting the plat work done. Uh, since that time, they did get approved and have submitted the plat that is before you today. Uh, of course, we would have looked at this administratively, but we can't approve a plat that has a waiver attached to it. We did send several comments to the design engineering firm, uh, the surveyor that's looked at this. Uh, most of our comments, pretty much all of our comments have been addressed. Now, there is something I would like to point out, and uh, Mike is highlighting that on lot one. You can see that there's a small family cemetery on the property. Um, they have pretty much met our comments, but uh, they have to provide a, an, a, um, a perpetual access to that cemetery in the event any of the descendants would like to come visit the grave. Something else that we, I talked with the surveyor this morning, 
that they would need to also add a note to the plat that says something to the effect of prior to a building permit being issued, they need to make sure they identify the limits of that cemetery. That way they don't disturb it. Uh, the surveyor that I spoke with this morning was fine with that, didn't see any issues. So we'll just make sure that that note gets added to the plat uh, prior to recording. But with that, like I said, this all of our comments have been addressed. It appears to be in good order. Other questions? Are they staff? Would you like to talk to the applicant? Is the applicant here? Let you come forward. Mr. Doug, Reed. B b Doug, if, if I could ask one quick question about the cemetery. I know we've talked about it before. Is there any responsibility to maintain that cemetery from the county know, standpoint or th th that cemetery on that lot is there anybody's responsibility to maintain that to, to make sure that it's always a cemetery well it's on whoever is going to own that lot will be on their property i think primary responsibility for any maintenance would fall on whoever owns the property at that point nothing that we would have any responsibility for Is any, I'm Jamie with SEC. Is there any questions for me? Anybody? Questions or a motion? Move to approve with staff comments. Motion to approve. Second. Second. In favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? It is approved. Staff reports and other business. Uh, I don't have anything uh, further at this point. Uh, we are gonna be having a work session at the conclusion of this meeting over in room 205 for anyone who's able to and interested to attend. Okay, and our next uh, meeting will be August the 12th here in this room at six o'clock p.m. If there's nothing else, we are adjourned.